What's going on, guys? This is Scott Desarn. So I decided to uh, make a video because of something that I made. Um, many of you know that I'm involved in um, Kendo officially now, and it's something that I really enjoy doing. Um, partially because of my sensei um, and the overall feel of it all because of the people. Um, there is another section to the uh, to the evenings, I should say, which is another different class. Uh, so kendo is the the sparring element to Japanese swordsmanship, whereas the uh, iaido is the the art of drawing one's sword from the saya the scabbard. Okay. So um, I was told that I was going to need an obi. Um, so I was like, you know, dang, you know, it's, it's going to cost some money. I don't mind spending money, especially on, on uh, something that I really enjoy. Sorry, just brush my teeth and it's like tasting like, I don't know, um, what do you call it? Toothpaste, thank you. Toothpaste uh, uh, on my mouth. I was like, mm, I'm not. So anyways, back to my story about the OB. Okay. Um. Didn't mind spending money, but at the same time, I sat back and I was like, well, you know, I've been making a lot of stuff. I made my Shinai bag, which is on the wall back there, the green one right about mm, there. And so I was like, you know what, maybe maybe I should think about making my own Obi. So I started browsing Obi um, on NineCirclesUSA.com, because that's where I actually got my Bogu, my armor. Um, and my uh, Kendogi. So um, I did find them, but I was looking for them more to to figure out what the specs were, the dimensions of the uh, the belts, basically. Um, and I found that they are um, nine and a half inches wide, give or take, um, and three hundred and 95 centimeters long. So I was like, okay, that's uh, a lot longer than I am. Don't, don't go anywhere with that. Anyways, um, so I had some material here, and I obviously chopped it up, and I actually started to sew today after I learned how to um, re-thread my, uh, my machine, uh, my sewing machine. So I just wanted to show you how awesome it really looks, because I'm, I'm rather, I'm always rather impressed with new things that I that I venture on and I've never done before in my life. Like the Shinai bag, never made one of those before in my life. I've made leather quivers for my arrows. I've made um, it's pretty much it for bags. So that is the first thing that I've tried in a long time, actually, but. I guess all the things that I've done in my past have allowed me to have um, conscience to to do what it is that I do. You know, the, the mind, the mindset, the frame of mind, in order to say, okay, this is what I have in my mind now. Let's make it. So I'm, I'm just, I was really impressed with the stitching because I was actually having trouble when I was being taught originally to stitch. Uh, straight lines and as you can see mostly I mean I'm not saying I didn't have hiccups or times where I was like those enough not really but um, it's it's amazing now one uh, bad thing I think is that I didn't have a long enough piece here at my house so instead of going out buying some cloth that I may or may not want and it being like anywhere between like four dollars all the way and up to potentially thirty dollars a yard, because this material here I, is kind of expensive, um, and it actually kind of has a little bit of play in it. Okay, um, so the obi is in two pieces, which I cut. Now, the piece was actually, if you can tell here. It's folded in half already. And I actually borrowed my sensei's obi 
and the OB was about this this width the, the width of what I have here, approximately three inches or so. Um, so I I based it off of that. So I folded it in half, got this, okay, sewed it all the way around. Actually, first of all, I should say I combined the pieces. They were both flat, sewed them together. Um, folded it over, ironed it, um, sewed it from one side up, down, all the way down, and then to the other side, okay, and then I left an opening at the top, and so I had to kind of like, you know how you have to undo your socks, you know, if you take them off and they're inside out, well I had to do that with the OB, um, in order to get the seams on the inside. Now, this I actually sewed it again. So you see these threadings, these these uh, this thread um, on the outside, but there are threads on the inside as well. So I sewed it twice basically, so it looks really neat. Um, so yeah, I ironed it a few times as I was doing it. Uh, I actually when when you're doing when you, when you've when you've already sewn one side and you turn it inside out and it's the, the the part that has actually been joined you have to kind of like grab it and you move it like this in order to get that that seam further out and then I took pin needles and I stuck it through and I hooked it to keep it in place because I was going to go sew through it again and that was going to allow me to iron it so that the the edge over here was flat. So when I sewed that side, it wasn't going to be all over the place. Um, so one of the other things I wanted to to do is to actually put it on. Um, now there's multiple different ways to wear OB. Um, there's ones where there's like a knot in the front, which you turn to the back, I believe. Um, there's ones where you make a knot in the front, you leave it in the front. There's ones where you have the, you make the knot over here, like you start here. I should probably angle that down just a scotch. Okay. There we go. Where you start here and you slowly work it around. And this is the way that, uh, Sensei taught me. So, um, that's what we're gonna do. So, but I wanna put on my Kindle Gi top before I do that. Because honestly, I don't think it's good enough to not have the full effect of what something should look like. So, bear with me. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm really excited about my OB here. The OB looks really good, turned out very well, especially for it being homemade and made in less than about two hours total. Um, and I'm actually looking forward to showing it off tomorrow evening when uh when I go to class. And that's kind of bright, isn't it? Zhoosh. Okay. It's a little better. Now I'm actually not sure how long I can actually record. A while back, about a year ago, after getting so many subscriptions and views. I was, uh, I guess, rewarded with the um, length of time. I can actually post videos, I think, around 15 minutes. I don't know. I'm actually probably going to record longer than that just to see if I can actually upload it. Uh, but we'll see. So again, OB top. I'm going to have the first sewn part, the thicker part that I sewed twice on the bottom. So here, and it's actually right about where my waist is, okay? And the reason why is because when I wear my kendo gi, uh, my hakama pants, that's the, those are probably going to be right above. So I need I need this to be about right where that's going to be. Okay, I lost my way already. There we go.
Oh, horrible! <laughs> I may not end up liking the material because of its elasticity, um, but for now, this will work. Okay, <clears throat> now, from what I'm to understand, it really doesn't matter. My sensei told me, he's like, you have to find something that works for you. You have to be comfortable with how it's tied. So, I honestly don't know, this is actually, the, the bottom one is actually probably going to be going up. But I do know, that this goes underneath. Maybe he did show me the knot that was supposed to be done. Not too sure. Okay, so I'm guessing it's something like that, because it's kind of like a knot, you see? And then, from what I'm understanding, you rotate that to the back. Okay. So, there. Obi. Obi. There we go, that works. How are you guys doing tonight, huh? Enjoying the evening? I know I am. Okay, talk about pants. I want to say, well, me personally, I would rather being able to see it, but I don't know. I'll ask for formal reasons tomorrow. I'm tying this in the back again. Yeah, that sure uh, does cinch up on you, doesn't it? Okay, so I also was shown this knot here, where you, uh, you fold it over. Okay, you've got the whole thing here. Fold it down and over like this. Like this. And then you've got that flat piece here in the front. And then, Take this one, and you open over. <laughs> Several times. Yeah, I know. 
pretty long process, but there are reasons. Mm. There's also other ways to tie it. Uh, I personally normally knot it. I just I, I knot it and then uh, I tuck it underneath and pull it through. Okay, so moment of truth. One Chotomate Kurasai, one moment please. Uh, I probably should have done this before uh, before I started, but I, uh, I tie my, well, maybe if I knew what the word was, but I tied my cloth here to the, uh, the sign, so I have to undo that. Why in the world is the heat on right now? Again, Chotomate Kurzai. Okay. <clears throat> so normally, you would take it, you would select maybe one, two uh, slats that you've uh, t twisted around yourself, and you would put it in. Me personally, I would put it in nothing less than two, but that's just me. <clears throat> okay? And then the, this, this uh, section here, Grab and you tuck underneath. And then you pull through and then you tuck you cinch down on it. It's almost like a slip knot. Okay? And that's that. I'm rather impressed with the way it feels. Uh, the side really doesn't feel like it's going to go anywhere, um, which is good. And I need to do some maintenance on my sword, too, apparently. Uh, it's been a long time since I've oiled it, so maybe I'll do that. And I also put that away wrong, so keep in mind that I've only been to one Yaido um, class so far. Uh, and so the way that you should have done, I should have done that, is when you when you go to draw, you you push out the uh, you dislodge the sword, okay, and you pull, you come out. Actually, I'm sorry, you come out at an angle like this. And then at about what, 10 to about, uh, I don't know, 12 inches, you bring it up and down. Okay, and then when you would put away, and I'm sorry, when, when you're also pulling back as you're doing that last, uh, when you last few inches of bringing the sword up, drawing it. I don't know if I completely agree with the way that they put it away, um, just because I have, again, and in my sense I said it's one of those things where you develop your own um, kind of style of doing it. Now he he says that when you when you uh, what you're supposed to do, what you're taught, is you you have your hands right over the side of the mouth of it, and your hands are actually going to be what catches. Your, your hands is actually going to be what's touching. So the, the blade never touches the, the outside of the side, so it shows. But for me, I don't like my hand being there when uh, the tip of the katana is coming right there. So what I do is I, I use the, my nail, my fingernail. My finger stays right there. And so at the angle, it literally just kind of slides. It's almost like a wire pen right there. Slides very well. It's actually touching the top, okay? And then you can feel it. Same thing. It's the same thing. This is when you when you when you pull it, it 
It's going to go in, it's going to drop, and you're going to hear it. It's going to go, okay? And then at that last few, uh, you're actually supposed to kind of bring the side out to it, and then you're supposed to pull back. Something similar to that. So that was like a 20 and a half minute video I just made. Hopefully it uploads properly. In any case, this is Kato-san. Domo arigatou gozaimasu. Thank you for listening. Uh, feel free to rate, subscribe, do what you're going to do. Thumbs down, thumbs up. Do what you're going to do. And uh, I will uh, accept everything and go from there. Thanks again, guys. Ciao.